six months ago, I put the Fang against the Rapier in a head-to-head, -head, and the Fang absolutely destroyed it at every boss, on normal creatures, and even low defense creatures, which it's not even meant to be good at. It even replaced other weapons of bosses that were meant to be weak to other things like Crush, Slash, or even Dragon Hunter weapons at Dragons. Now, due to the drop rate, the Fang's price has come down even further to just 42 million GP, and looks on course to eventually be the same price as a whip. And whilst it's amazing and brilliant to use and my favourite weapon of all time, it's on a course to also destroy the price of almost every single melee weapon. But don't worry, Jagex nerfed it. So bear with me while I try to explain this. If you want to skip to the testing part, I'll timestamp it below, but this is how it works before and after the nerf. Any attack you do generates a number depending on your gear and stats. Then what you're hitting also generates a number based on their defensive gear and stats. Whoever rolls the highest number wins, and if it's the defense, you hit a zero, but if it's the attack, it then rolls a random number between your minimum and max hit, and that's what you hit for. Where the fang is different is you get two chances, so if you would have missed an attack, it does it all over again and gives you an extra roll. If you win the second roll, you still hit your opponent just like you would have if you'd have won the first one. So these numbers have been simplified, but before the nerf, the attack rolled twice and so did the defense. But after the nerf, the defense sticks with whatever number it rolled the first time around. Which doesn't sound like much of a nerf, does it? So for example, if your attack had a rating of 100, meaning you could roll any number from 1 to 100, and the defense was a rating of 40, that would mean 60% of the time you hit because you rolled above 40, and the defense can't possibly roll that high. And if you roll a number in the bottom 40%, there's a 50-50 chance you win. This gives you an 80% overall chance. Pre-nerf, you simply did this twice, so you had an 80% chance on a hit in the first set of rolls, and then an 80% chance on the hit on the second set, which gave you an overall hit chance of 96%. The only difference with the new mechanic is that if you lost the first roll, it's more likely that the defensive roll was above average. The average roll on this instance is 20, but when the defense wins, it's actually 28. In the same way that the average amount of points a team gets at a basketball game, say maybe 100, the average amount of points a winning team gets will be slightly higher. By keeping this number for the second roll, your chance of a successful hit is now 94.4%, which in all honesty hardly impacts it at all, but the biggest impact is on creatures with a high defense, ironically nerfing what the fang was meant for. Against a creature that has the same defense as your attack of let's say 100, then your first attack has a 50% chance of hitting, and your second attack an extra 25%, giving you a 75% hit chance in total. After the nerf, the second roll only has a 17.5% chance of hitting, giving you an overall hit chance of 67.5%. Not game breaking, but definitely noticeable. Before I test other style weapons, the first thing I wanted to test was the Rapier versus the Fang, since I already knew the exact kills per hour before the nerf from the last video, so I could now see exactly what the impact of the nerf was. Starting with a giant mole again, which has a defense of 260 to stab, last time, in 30 minutes, the Fang won 36 kills to 26. This time, I did 15 minutes with the Fang, so it would need to be 13 kills, and I got 17. Again, beating the Rapier and only one less kill than the Fang would have got pre-nerf. But the Rapier was meant to be better on low-level creatures, so I gave it the benefit of the doubt and went to Dark Beasts, with only 120 normal defense and 30 to stab defense. So if you always hit a creature, then the Rapier would do more damage than the Fang. The reason the Fang normally wins is because it hits far less zeros due to its accuracy. I had a few comments last time that I wasn't including the main defense of a creature, and for something like the Dark Beast, 150 defense in total wasn't low. But you have to remember that I'm max combat with good gear, using super combat potions and praying piety. 150 defense is one of the lowest defense creatures I will kill this month, and for anyone with lower stats, gear, or not praying, the Fang becomes even better against the Rapier. Over 15 minutes, the Rapier killed 31 Dark Beasts and the Fang 34. So I went out and tried to find the lowest defensive creature with a decent sized health pool that you will realistically still kill by the time you unlock the Rapier and decided on Mutated Bloodvelds, because I really wanted to know exactly where the defense level is when the Rapier becomes better than the Fang. Now Mutated Bloodvelds have some of the lowest defense in the entire game at just 30 defense with no stab defense. After 15 minutes, the Fang did 44 kills, and thankfully, the Rapier did 48. 
That means somewhere in the middle at around 80 to 90 defense, the Fang becomes better. But the issue I have with that is this. These are all of the common Slayer assignments and bosses where you can realistically use a Rapier or a Fang, and the ones in green are those with a defense of 90 or less. Now I know you wouldn't use some of these weapons for some of those creatures and bosses, but I just wanted to show how little use there is for a Rapier now. There is a way to bring back a use for the Rapier which I will come to at the end, but the Fang has obliterated the stab marker and you may feel like that's okay because it's a level 82 weapon anyway, but it's also having a huge impact on crush weapons, slash weapons and even the following. So next I wanted to test the Dragon Hunter Lance against the Fang, a weapon designed for one purpose only, to be the best at killing dragons. So I took my setup with some insulated boots, because why move when you can AFK, to ruin dragons. These have a solid defense of 306, so I was very curious if the Dragon Hunter Lancer's 20% extra damage and accuracy would beat the Fang's double roll mechanic. With the Fang, 9 kills took me 8 minutes and 55 seconds, and with the Lance, the same number of kills took me 8 minutes and 23 seconds, which is around 4 more kills per hour. Those who farm ruined dragons will 100% pay the 37 million for the Lance, but for many players who don't, is it really worth it for you to do 60 ruined dragon kills per hour instead of 56 for that amount of GP? For some it will be, but for a lot it won't, and because of how supply and demand works, that's a large impact on the price of a lance, as you can see from the graph. The Adamant Dragon, Mithril, Skeletal Wyvern, and KBD have a similar defense level, and will give similar results. And Vorkath's defense is 240, only slightly lower. So that's half the creatures that used to have nothing really to rival them, now with a 40 mil item that's good here as well as almost everywhere, and it's like the blowpipe was pretty nerfed, but 10 times better. Of course, the Dragon Hunter Lance will still be popular and used because of things like Orm, where's the best in slot, unless you somehow miss every Dragon Warhammer spec, but it's declining in prices due to there being less demand in other areas. The impact on the lance is minor in compared to the Blade of Saldo. Of course, the price of the blade is protected behind the Bofa, as they are both created from the Enhanced Crystal Weapon Seed. So as long as the Bofa is worth a lot, so will the seed and therefore the blade. But look at how many blades are traded on the GE every day, compared to the other melee weapons. Around 20 a day, which is honestly depressing, but the reason is that every boss with a similar crush, stab or slash defense, the Fang is now best in slot for. In fact, it doesn't even need to be that close. To prove it, I went to Seracnus, which has 50 more stab defense than it does crush, and tested the Fang against an Abyssal Bludgeon, considered to be one of the best weapons there behind only the Scythe and Inquisitor's Mace. Eight Seracnus kills with the Bludgeon took me 10 minutes and 6 seconds, and the Fang 9 minutes and 35 seconds. I can't tell you how much I love my Fang. In fact, the series where I made Max Cash from scratch, my main strategy was just to get a Fang as soon as possible, but it's slowly destroying the price of almost every other melee weapon. These are the prices a month before the Fang was released, and today's prices, which is only 7 months later. The last time the Fang was nerfed, they said that the option of reducing the drop rate of the Fang wasn't on the table because they felt the horse had already bolted, and it's hard to disagree with that. But there are other ways. Firstly, the group of bosses with a similar slash, attack and strength defense, you can just lower one of the stats, immediately making another style of weapon best in slot again. Fang will never be best in slot against Vettian for example due to the massive difference in defensive stats and the same would happen. And if they aren't going to nerf the Fang or people don't want them to nerf the Fang or reduce its drop rate, then Dragon Hunter weapons need a boost of at least 5%, but I would personally like to see 10% to really set them aside from the Fang. Finally, the Blade of Saldor, Rapier and Inquisitor's Mace all need a slight buff. The Rapier is only useful for levelling on things with no defence, and the handful of creatures you may also kill once a month. And the Blade of Saldor, I'm honestly not even sure what it's best in slot for anymore. Someone? Anyone? I'll put a poll up with the video, let me know what you think. Should these items get a buff? Should bosses have their stats changed? Or should I just shut my pipe hole because it's distracting you from owning all of these bosses with your OP fang?